Hello, and welcome to my video. Today, I am going to review the BR6 Geiger counter. Of the detectors that I own, this is the cheapest and simplest model. In subsequent videos, I will review my other, more sophisticated devices. The BR6 Geiger counter, has been reviewed before, here on YouTube. In many cases it received, perhaps unfairly in my view, some pretty poor assessments. Perhaps the reviewers had applications in mind that were beyond the capabilities of the device, or perhaps they didn't have a strong enough background in basic physics, but either way, I am going to share my own views of this product. This product will detect gamma rays and some beta radiation. It is not in any way able to detect alpha particles, nor does it claim to be able to do that. It does, however, claim to be able to detect some X-ray radiation, but, looking at the specification for the Geiger Muller tube, it is clear that the X-rays will need to be really damn high energy for this particular tube to get a good detection efficiency. The sensitivity to gamma radiation, is pretty good, given the low cost of the device, and clearly the design of the M4011 tube is optimized for gamma detection, at the expense of beta, and X-ray radiation sensitivity. One serious limitation of this product, is that the measurement range, seems to be limited to 100 microsieverts per hour dose rate. This is not a limitation of the GM tube, but of the firmware design. Okay, let's get this sucker open. The first thing I want to say, is that I have owned this device, for over two years, and it is still using the original batteries that I fitted to the unit when it arrived. For over six months, I had this unit permanently powered up, on my desk, using the USB power input, which I will talk about later. The USB power option, is probably one of the best features, that I like about this product. With the case now open, let's look at what is inside this device. The main component, is the Geiger Muller tube, we will talk about that a bit later. Next we have the high voltage power supply. This GM tube needs nearly 400 volts to work, and this part of the circuit, provides that. Then, we have the connectors for the keypad and the display. Underneath the display flexi connector, we have the MCU, this is essentially the brain of the device. Then we have a micro USB connector, and a power regulator, that allows the device to be powered externally, without any drain on the batteries. Finally, we have the piezo sounder module, that allows the unit to create the particle clicks and the alarm sounds. The first thing I will test, is perhaps the real strength of this particular device, which is, its sensitivity to background levels of radiation. If you are looking for a Geiger counter to perform a radiological survey of your home, this is the most important property, of a device for that purpose. Sensitivity, to low levels of background gamma rays, is an important metric, unless you are expecting an imminent nuclear attack in your neighborhood, in which case, suicide pills might be a better investment. Now I will test the background radiation levels, when I place some tungsten welding rods next to the device, which have a tiny amount of thorium metal, mixed into them. The dose rate recorded, over the averaging period, is about double the natural background level that I normally see here, and this is completely, as I would expect, from such a weak source of radioactivity. Next, I am going to open up an ionization chamber, from a smoke detector, and expose the americium 241 pellet to the Geiger counter. This pellet only has 0.8 microcuries of radiation, 
which is actually about 20% lower than what is typical of the ones that you can buy in the US or the EU. The levels of radiation detected by the BR-6, are about three times higher than the indoor ambient background levels. I have seen comments, in other people's videos, from people saying that americium 241, is an alpha source, and so the detection of radiation by a gamma ray detector must be faked, so for the brainlets, I'm going to do what I was trying to avoid, and delve into some fundamental physics. Clearly, if those folks were able to read more than two lines of the Wikipedia entry for americium 241, they would already know the answer, but clearly, brainlets can't read. Okay, here is the reason, americium 241, decays to neptunium 237, through alpha decay but also releases a gamma ray. Neptunium-237, then undergoes a further alpha decay, but also releases another gamma ray, in the process becoming protactinium-233. This then undergoes a beta decay, and releases another gamma ray, transmuting to uranium-233 in the process. This then undergoes yet another alpha decay, and releases an associated gamma ray, becoming thorium-229. This then alpha decays, and guess what, also releasing a gamma ray, to become radium-225. Radium-225, then undergoes a beta decay and releases, yet another gamma ray, which then becomes actinium-225, which then further decays to francium-221, via and alpha decay, with an associated gamma ray release. Anyway, this is pretty boring, until the whole process results in thallium-205, which is stable, and the decay chain is finished. But anyway, gamma rays are released over the entire decay chain, so they are detected by any Geiger counter that is sensitive to gamma rays. Anyway, now that the brainlets have become too bored, with hearing so many long words, and have moved on to watching videos with the promise of tits and guns, we can carry on with this video. So, I was in Guangdong province, in China, and did some artisanal uranium mining, and found this piece of uranium ore. This device records over 100 times the background levels of radiation, and with the design of the case, the sample is about 20 millimeters from the GM tube, so the levels, when in contact with this rock, would be about double those shown. The main thing that you will notice when you see this device, is just how large and clear the display is. I also like the fact that the device can be permanently powered from USB, without draining the batteries. This is great for keeping a constant eye on the background radiation levels, and this thing normally lives on the window ledge, next to my desk. Finally, the BR-6 has good sensitivity to gamma radiation, and the display values track well with my other, more expensive, detectors. Okay, let's talk about some of the more shitty aspects of this product. Firstly, the display range is limited, to just 100 microsieverts per hour dose rate, even though the GM tube is capable of working up to 10 times this level. This is just lazy firmware design. Even worse, the bar graph is restricted to a working range of only 600 nanosieverts. The firmware engineer responsible, for ruining this product, should be fired, and then hung, drawn and quartered. The next point, is that the case feels pretty flimsy and the buttons are really horrible to use. Finally, due to the excessively deep case of this product, the GM tube is quite a long way from the outside world, and when measuring bright sources, the values can be around 50% of that obtained from direct contact. So, whilst the BR6 Geiger counter, has plenty of faults, if your purpose for buying it, is to measure background radiation, then it is probably okay, 
given the very low cost. I just want to circle back to the YouTuber and prepper icon, Survival Lily. Her testing might give the impression of scientific rigor, but it misses some of the key underlying principles of the physics involved. First of all, do not assume that all gamma rays are the same, they are not. Every isotope that emits gamma rays, does so, with a quite unique energy fingerprint, this is how gamma ray spectroscopy can be used, to identify the exact isotopes involved. So, if your reference device, the Gamma Scout, that you are so proud of owning, was calibrated using cesium-137, but you are measuring a radium-226 source, with products that use different GM tubes, none of which have any energy compensation curves for the measurement, then don't be too surprised, with getting different results. I'm sure that Elizabeth, doesn't want my advice, but here it is anyway. Given that you are making videos for paranoid people, that are preparing for nuclear war, then perhaps test your Geiger counters on sources that contain the actual radionuclides, that your viewers would be likely to encounter, in actual nuclear fallout. This means, cesium-137, barium-140, iodine-131 and strontium-90, to name but a few. You can buy these test sources online, and given the money you are making, should not be beyond your budget. Anyway, that's it for this review of the BR6 Geiger counter. I hope you enjoyed my little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you want to see more of this kind of video, you could always press the subscribe button. This is not a commercial channel, nor will it ever be, so I can say what I want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get fucked. Thank you for your time.